Welcome back to Anything Goes Garage. Look at this beauty. What we have here is a 1969 Chevelle Malibu. Not a super sport, not a big block car, not a four speed car. But it's still a beautiful, beautiful car. Small block, automatic transmission, beautiful paint job, really nice, all the restoration, very, very nice car. Uh, Cal hood, got some neat options in it. Let me uh, take you around on this. Oh wow, this hinges need some oil. Ugh. All right, this 69 Chevelle sports a ZZ3 GM crate engine. Factory power steering, power brakes, and air conditioning. All converted over to 134. Uh, it's aluminum head engine. Uh, I don't know size car, but it's got a demon carburetor on it. I just took her for a ride. Feels like she's got a misfire and a vibration in it. Uh, well, part of the vibration is it has solid motor mounts. Maybe even a solid transmission mount the way it feels. Somewhere along the line, I think it's got a misfire also. Um, makes okay power. You wanted me to go over this thing and check it out. Change all the fluids, go over to tune-up. Just make it right again because it does sit a lot. So let's uh, go over this thing. We'll get on the lift and uh, check it out. All right. All right, so I set it up on the lift. Here's the exterior part of it. Beautiful paint. I love the uh, white stripe. Very nice rally wheels. Pretty cool. Beautiful green interior. What is it with the green cars? It's past uh, two uh, <laughs> two jobs that come in. Beautiful. It's got a was that B&M quarter stick in it. Uh, mechanical gauges. Got the nice uh, GM steering wheel. Very very nice car. Air conditioned. Just beautiful all out. Got a couple little things. It's showing it's age, but no, it's a good car. Looks really well. Very, very nice car. Makes me want to break out my uh, 68. Need some bumpers and stuff. It's starting to pit, but these are all original. But no, otherwise, no, that's easy stuff there. Let's get this thing in the air and uh, check it out. Here's the underside of the belly of the beast. Looks pretty good. Supposedly this was an older frame off restoration. It looks like it has a Flowmaster exhaust kit in it. It's got a turbo, well it's a turbo 350. Mini starter, control arms are done. I did take this for a ride. It does not run all that great. I mean it runs, but it's got a clunk in the front end somewhere. All the bushings have been replaced unless one of the bushings popped out, not sure, but it's got disc brakes, all new fuel, everything's done. The floor is beautiful in this car. This was supposedly a four year restoration. It's an older one, like I said. But, oh, look at this, we got rubber. Wow, call the warranty company. Something wrong with the tires. Are they on both sides? Yes. Also, he's got um, tailpipes coming for it. They never put them on. This thing is obnoxiously noisy on the interior without tailpipes if those of you who if you know you know it just drones through your head so well we have a 10 bolt with a posi rear look at that all right i was wondering if this thing was going to have a good rear so he told me to check the fluid change the fluids whatever you got to do so we might pull that cover off and he says there's he says the rear sounds like it's going but it sounded good to me but we can always pull the cover and change the fluid and inspect the oil so got a Jasper Turbo 350 in it. It's got some block hugger, pedal block manifolds, exhaust uh, headers on it. It's like stainless brake lines and fuel lines. Everything's at factory. Very nice, very nice. It could run a little better. It wasn't off the dead start without, it didn't spin the tires. It made some power, but I don't know what gears in this thing but he said go over it and make it run better so that we will all right so uh we're gonna do a fluid check on this thing and check all the belts and give it the 
once over. I want to check the headers, the intake for tightness, valve covers. Uh, I want to pull the air cleaner off, see what kind of condition. Carburetor's in, and let's see what else we want to do here. We're going to grease this thing. It said charge the AC if it needs it. So uh, I want to pull the plugs out. It's got a misfire. He said one of the plugs at nighttime, you could see it parking across. So that might be part of the vibration and doesn't just doesn't feel right going down the road. So it may need another set of wires. We'll check the condition of the plugs and the inside of the cap. I don't know how many miles are on this thing since they built it. So we're going to find that out. Zip ties and spark plug wires. Hmm. No, I'm not going to taste it. No, Derek, I'm not going to taste it. <laughs> it does smell very dirty, though. We're going to change that in the filter. And let's take this thing off. And we have ourselves a demon carburetor. It looks like it's backfired a couple of times. Missing the gasket. This is actually a marine. Used to be a marine carburetor. I didn't buy that, but it's a double pumper, electric choke. I'll have to find out what uh, model it is. It may be the Street Demon. I don't know if those things look like it's something out of a marine, but I'll have to look up the numbers. All right, so it's got the deep groove pulley. The belts look good, nice in tension, not cracked, not tore up or glazed. Nice shape. Check some power steering fluid here. And it ain't even touching the stick because there is a leak down there at the clamp on the return. So that is not making noise, but it's not on the stick and it's hot. So, um, yeah, we're going to find out what model demon this is. This is weird. I've never seen these unless it was marine. They have no vacuum advance hooked up on this whatsoever, so it's either locked out or the total set that way, but maybe we can uh, make this thing a little bit more streetable, tunable. I'm not big on blocking off the vacuum advance on a street car. So, have coated headers, they're all peeled off. Some of them plugs look like they're real fun to get to. So there was a return line right here that's actually got a loose clamp. I'm going to have to tighten that up. That's probably where all the power steering fluid went. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, get some tools. All right, boys and girls. I was in here tightening up some of the headers. They were pretty tight. Told them it took about an eighth of a turn. Not bad. And I figured out what the clunk was in the front end when I was turning and backing up with the brakes on. We have a loose control arm. Look at that. So your bolt, or 3H24, backed out. And now this has a gap here, and the control arm is moving back and forth. So we're gonna have to tighten that up. This one here, I'm gonna check the torque on all of them anyway. It might have been torqued while it was in the air. It's supposed to be torqued with the car on the ground. So you never know, they back off. I've had them do that before. I also saw that this has a Crow's system on a PC, PCV valve system, okay? Hopefully it has a baffle on these valve covers. I'm sure they do. And there's no breather for it to take fresh air from. So that is a, that is just looking for trouble. Cause now you're making, well, you don't have a baffle, but it needs to bring fresh air in to get rid of all your, say blow by and your gases. So now you're gonna have a real negative uh, vacuum in your oil pan, which you shouldn't. It should pull fresh air in one side into the PCV valve and reburn those gases. So we're gonna have to get a uh, breather on that side of the valve cover. All right, so I also found that the other control arm had one loose bolt, but it wasn't clunking, but it's not torqued the spec. It's actually snug, that's it. So um, I'm gonna run these in, get the torque wrench, find the torque, and they're paying to get to with the torque wrench because wheel well's in the way, just like the four door again.
got something squeaking here. Bearing bed, something. The clutch is free, but this compressor is not coming on, obviously. It's low on uh, Freon 134, and the fan is not blowing very well. It's got one position. There's a power wire here with no fuse in it going into this fan control. I wonder why the fuse is out. Either they kept popping or they couldn't find a fuse. So, before we get in all this wire stuff, I'm trying to see if we get the air conditioner working. That was one of the main things he wanted to hear was to fix that and see what's going on with it. That, that box over there that controls the speeds, high, low, medium. Well, one of them is, two of them ain't working, so I guess the next trip would be to uh, try to find how much fluid uh, Freon's in this thing. Alright, I have to turn that fan off because I can't hear anything. Thought I can't hear with a meter. Put on the low side, see if there's any pressure in this thing. Zero. Here's some movement here. Yeah, this thing is on zero, so there's a leak someplace. Uh, about six pounds in it, or six. I don't know what the heck that is. I can't read nothing. It says six. It ain't nothing. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, fire this thing up, put the clutch on, or put the uh, AC on, see if the uh, safety kicks in. If this has one. Usually they're thermal couplers. Thermal coupler that turns the clutch on. All right, so this is a driver's side valve cover, and I pulled this blank plug out of here because technically the PCV valve is only going to go here because this is in the way. The compressor, we can't put a big breather there. That's got threads. That's got threads. And if I recall, a lot of the uh, PCV valves went up front and the breather went in the back up into the back of the air filter assembly which i do have one of these and if i had the stock air cleaner it would run up into the bottom in a filter but you can knock these plugs out and put that in there and put a breather on that side and make that pcv valve go over here with that grommet but i'll have to reconfigure this vacuum line for the ac vent and the power steering i'll have to move some stuff around so and i believe it tees off the back of the, the back of here this goes to the transmission and vacuum advance doesn't go anywhere <laughs> i think there's usually something here no 
I guess it's going to be here ported. So, all right. Um, trying to get the AC working. I've had no luck yet. Now, no power to the clutch. It's either going to be the slider control on the control panel. I got to test the rest of that stuff. Right now, we're just trying to get it running. I'd like to have the AC working for the summer for him. He did ask for it. But uh, we got some other fish to fry. I cleaned out the air bleeds in the carburetor. And um, I guess we'll head towards the timing. If I can get to the marks down there. So I checked the timing, chiming set at 12 with the back of the vans disconnected. So that's about good for this little street car. It makes a little bit of compression if it is the ZZ motor from the Corvette. Corvette. <laughs> the aluminum heads and stuff. So um, they had the balance marked. It's a nice uh, marked balancer. So it's good. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get a few things for this thing. Uh, I want to cool this thing off totally. I want to get the plugs out of this thing and check those wires. I see there was tape around one of the spark plug wires. That may be one of the misfire issues. I know. Oops. Uh, tape doesn't, tape don't make it what it ain't. Makes it what it isn't. Uh, not misfire. <laughs> so. Oh, Lord. I know uh, whether you guys can see that down there. There you go. That power steering hose is, return line is all swelled up and it's leaking. I want to change that out. It's like mush, so and especially when it gets hot, it's even mushier, and it's it's dripping onto the uh, sway bar and down on the chassis. So that's one thing I want to change before that pops, and you have zero power steering. And there's plus it's low anyway, so I'll get it while it's low, and then I'll top it off and bleed it. All right, lower side of the low side of the return of the power steering and El Musho hose here, and these stupid clamps that people use. These things suck. Yeah, they might have came like this from the factory, but that hex size is not quarter inch and is um, some half metric size. Nothing I can find to fit this. So I end up having to squeeze up there with a screwdriver to get these things off. And I've used these before, and they always stinking leak. Can't stand them. Terrible design. I'd rather use the worm style clamps, but. All right, a little bit of progress here. Uh on the AC system. Well, I managed to fix that PCB system, but except for the breather. But anyway, I was working on the heater fan switch, which takes special coils for high and low, and they build up resistance with like coils, and they get super, super hot. And they're located right in, the, right in this box right here. And they're cooled by the fan, uh, the evaporator, whatever, but they get very hot. You could tattoo yourself with them. Sometimes I think they get cherry red, but. You can tattoo yourself with them. So I looked down that hole and I took that out to clean the contacts up and I find that nice, fuzzy, warm mouse nest just next to that. Now this car would have burnt to the ground if that stuff started blowing around in that box and got on those hot uh, uh, coils on low or medium, poof, this car would have melted to the ground. That plastic box wouldn't stand a chance it would set that uh free on off and this car would be a, a ball of flames so anyway i got the clutch to work it's actually the switch and the dash it's got either dirt or it's going bad when you flip it up and down i'll show you in a minute but um i i had to redo this pcv valve so i went to the front of the valve cover and i put the t all i did was reverse what they had and i just got to get a breather and a grommet for that side so all i did was reverse it and put this up here so that's pretty good uh, I think everything's clear here. Let me see. I gotta oil this door. It's just so dry in the mechanism. So anyway, you turn the key on and you go. You can watch that here. And you see that generator light click? I'm just moving this thing enough. It's got a bad contact on it. But I hear the clutch working so the switch is giving up the ghost so i'm either going to be able to get some contact cleaner in there if i have to take this dash apart i think i can get it if i take this off 
I really don't want to get all that involved with this thing to get this apart. I can't get my hand up in here because I don't have little hands. Can't go from the back, so this whole thing, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I also have to correct this speedometer. I d I'll put my drag in here. I think it's 10 mile an hour fast. So uh, let me give this thing a shot and see if it'll see if the AC comes on. Chevelles, now I want to drive mine. <laughs> Where are you going, puppy? Hmm? Where are you going? this car it's my 68 Chevelle Super Sport big block four speed me and my father built this back in 90s bought it back in 97 finished it by I think it was 2000 it's a cheaper SS version 325 horse has an M20 four speed with a 331 Posi Warrior has no gauges, no tachometer, no power brakes, but it has power steering. Uh, we built it pretty much the way it would have been when it was purchased in California when somebody raced it until it blew up and somehow it ended up here in New Jersey. So I've been driving it here and there. It's got drum brakes all the way around. It's supposed to be a hubcap car with F78 14s, which I may go back to because I don't race it. I don't do burnouts with it. Good one. And uh, I do take care of it. Except for the steering wheel, it's all stopped. Got a couple pieces of trim fell off. Sold. Finished this car in 2000. Heads need work. Use it some oil. Guides are tore out of it.
we have Chevelles, and we have Rottweilers. <laughs> So there's that car, 68, 69, 72, 72, there's another 72 in the shop, my big block car, and another 72, or 71 four door over there on the other side. So anyone want to add any Chevelles to the collection, bring them over. Four new tires all right so i went to go for a ride and this thing had a death wobble in it if you haven't noticed one on the camera i get back here and look at this tire now, i've replaced this once before the cord shifted in it and it's ready to go so i'm going to get this thing out of here and get it deflated before it blows up i've had them come apart just sitting yeah the cord shifting on it oh front one too front ones are going all right Time for four new tires. Look at that. Wow. Two of them. There's a normal tire, nice and square. And that one, ready to blow. Look how rounded they are. Terrible. All right. So, just a little bit out of round. <laughs> Whew. that's supposed to be flat across that's almost kind of normal but the back one's even worse they're ready to come apart as we speak so i gotta get these off hey hey what do you say welcome back again sunday memorial day weekend doing a few more things today washing some cars changing some wheels so yesterday i had an issue with some uh tires on my 68 chevelle we had some shifted cords so i pulled them off the rims because they were so shifted i was worried they were going to explode and blow out the quarter or the fender on the left side because it was not just one tire but two two tires now these tires have been kept inside they've been sauced up they've been to every car show not one crack in them but that's what happens after when they get old now they are 24 years old and they look like well not quite brand new but as you can see they ain't flat like that no more so luckily i didn't give it the beans as you saw in the video and uh i think it would have ripped a quarter off it maybe sent me into a fence or something so now my new plan is to put the stock wheel and tire combination on it from the factory 14 by sixes or 14 by sevens I think they're sevens hold on 14 by well here's the setup here here it is 14 by 6 jk's i found out that 68 9 they did use these little 14 inch and they had the full wheel cover and you just put the ss 396 uh badge in there and you just tan these bend these back and put it in there they do sell them they're really cheap so i'm gonna get these uh shot blasted down to uh raw steel and i'm gonna prime them paint them black and clear coat them and I'll clean up these hubcaps, put the centers in them. Then I gotta make that big old phone call to Coker 
to get the correct tire, which I need to find. It's either going to be a red line or a white line. I don't know what it is. If it's supposed to be a G series, an F series, I'm not sure yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. So I do want it correct. I don't race it anymore. I don't really beat on it. I have this. I have that. I have this and that and that and that. I don't need to beat on it. Now, occasionally I jump on it and chirp a few gears, but at three, four hundred dollars a pop on those cokers. Mm, no. So what I'm going to do now, I just washed up the old girl for uh, June 8th and I'm going to take it for a little spin and see how this new carburetor is. I love the throttle response on it. It's super, super crisp. So get under a load and take it for a ride and see what happens. Let's go. All right, put you up here. Hopefully you can see. Ah, get you pushed up here. Hold on. So our belts are still good to December 2025. That's good. We've got a helmet still in date and a jacket. I won't give this thing the beans right away because it's got to warm up. I know it's 85, 90 degrees out, but you know, it's got a little temperature in it. But uh, let's do this.
the car, but I'm not driving all the way out to Cecil. And this is the turning radius. Yeah, so going all the way out to Cecil will make a couple of time shots. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen between now and the 8th. I'm just going to go to Cecil and make some time shots and hope for the best first round. Get lucky, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to pull up here and just glance at a plug. I know I should have pulled them after a pull, but that wasn't really a pull. Alright, so... I don't want to burn myself, but I probably will, but I pulled three plugs out of the uh, right side and whew, we are rich as heck. So I guess I'm going to have to pull a little jet out of this thing and stuff a new set of plugs in it because that's not good. That's only three of them. So like I say, I'm starting from ground zero, one carburetor, so it's not kind of happy. And I had a little fuel leak. There was some fuel puddle there. I just wiped it up, so I got to check my connections. All right, so found my issue at least most of it secondary bowl level was way too high I turned the pump on and it was running out that sight glass like you wouldn't believe so that was probably my problem the front was a little low so I raised it up just so it just wets the thread so we should be good now uh, I had a little leak I had to uh, attend to 